Okay, here's the continuation of my lecture on t-test. So in this part, we're going to have the demonstration in the report writing. And in the last part, we had our lecture in Introduction to Independent Samples t-test. And this is the problem in that I showed you in part one. So 24 people were involved in an experiment to determine whether background noise affects short-term memory. Half of the samples were randomly allocated to the noise condition and half to the quiet condition. And as we can see in our slide here, the values of those or the number of words recalled of those in the noise condition are displayed here on the left side. So some recalled, one of them recalled five words, another recalled 10 words, six words, and so on. While those who were in the quiet condition recalled, um, some of them recalled 15 words, nine words, 16 words, 15 words, and so on. So in general, if we're going to look at the data, it, it appears that those who were assigned in the quiet condition had better recall of words relative to those who were in the noise condition. But to, to further solidify that, uh, that finding, we have to conduct independent samples t-test. So let me now demonstrate that using SPSS. Okay, so this is how I encoded the data in SPSS. What I, what I did first is to create two variables in two columns. In the first variable, I, I, I created a column for the grouping, while in the second column, this is where I encoded the data. So this is, the practice, this is my practice in encoding data in SPSS. First, I encode the scores of those who came from group one, and then below the last case for group one, I insert or paste all the scores of those who come from group two. And SPSS needs to know which scores belongs to which condition. So I had to specify that the first 12 participants, all of them came from group one, while the participants in row number 13 to row number 24 were all from the second condition. So I did that by typing ones and twos. And in order for SPSS to determine which um, the meanings, uh, to determine the, um, the, the meaning of the values of one and two here in the groupings, what I did is that I click on the variable view and in the groupings, you have to look for values and click the three dots on the right, uh, near on the right side of the box. And then for the value labels, you need to, let me remove this so that I can show you how I did it. For group number one, they were in the noise condition. So let me add this one. While group number two is known as the quiet condition. So let me add two, which means quiet condition. So once you're done with that, we, you can now click on OK. And then we can go back to the variable view. And in order for us to perform the analysis, we can click on Analyze and click on Compare Means and then Independent Samples ETES. And you need to put the variables in the right box. So let me show, how I, show you how I did that. The group, I put the grouping variable here in the second box while I put the dependent variable or the number of words recalled in the test variable box. And then for, as you can see, if you're going to click OK, the analysis would not run. What you need to do first is to click on define groups. And you have to make sure that for group one, you specify the value of one, while you have to type two in group two and then click on continue. And then once you have specified the groupings, you can now click on OK. And as you can see in our output, the results of the analysis is now visible. So what I'm going to do is to switch to my PowerPoint and then we are going to interpret the results. Okay, so here are the results that we were able to, to generate using SPSS. So as we can see, first let's look at the T value. The T value is negative 6.5. 137 or 6.14, I usually get the question, sir, how do we interpret the t-value, especially if it's negative? Actually, what we do is just, we just disregard the sign of the statistic. We just focus on the value because whether it's negative or positive depends on which group you inserted first into the analysis. So if it happened that I assigned the quiet condition as group one while the noise condition were assigned as group two, 
then this value would have been positive. So typically we disregard the sign of the T statistic. What we are interested in is the significance level. So as you can see, the P value or the significance level is 0 0.000 and that is definitely below 0 0.05. So like what you learned in the previous video, if the P value is smaller than 0 0.05, then it means that there is a significant difference between the two conditions. So at this point, now we are aware that the, the performance of the two groups is not the same. There is a significant difference between the two groups. But in order for us to shed more light on that finding, we need to take a look at the mean values. And as we can see here, the mean number of words recalled by those who came from the noise condition is 7.25, while the mean of those who came from the quiet condition or the no noise condition is 13.25. 83. So in other words, if you memorize a set of words in a quiet environment, then you are more likely to recall more words, while those who recalled or, re or studied words in a noise environment were more likely to perform um, worse compared to those who reviewed in the quiet condition. Okay, so with that being said, we can now report the results of the analysis. So in the here is the report that I was able to, to prepare ahead of time. So a research was conducted to determine if there is a significant difference in the number of words recalled between those who were exposed to the noise condition or between those who were exposed to noise and those who were not. The results indicate that those in the noise condition, after you mentioned the, con the condition or the group, it's best to write them in there, state the statistics. Particularly, we state the mean and the standard deviation value for that group. So in this case, I got the mean and the standard deviation value of the noise condition from this table. Okay, and then continuing what I was saying a while ago, so the results indicate that those who were in the noise condition perform significantly worse compared to those in the quiet condition. And since we mentioned quiet condition, we have to report the mean and the standard deviation of the quiet condition, which is also from this table in SPSS. And then finally, as I end the statement, I, I state the T statistic together with the P values. So I got these values from this table. So the T statistic is negative 6.14, while the P value, since it's 0 0.00, zero we 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 can say that it's less than point zero zero one so in plain language it means that if you if you try to study a set of words in a noisy environment then you are more likely to perform worse in a recall task relative to those who reviewed a set of words in a quiet environment all right there you go that is it for my short demonstration and lecture on how to conduct interpret and report the results of independent samples test. That's it for now. See you again.